Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome. Uh, this is the Real Estate Millionaires. I'm Nate Barger, your host. This is my good friend here, Jason M. And we grew up together and, uh, you know, in Seven Hills, we grew up with, uh, you know, just, man, we had a really good time growing up. We grew up in a crime-ridden neighborhood and, uh, you know, Jay has turned his criminal past. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's turned into a uh, real estate guy. Uh, I, I, I reached out, Jay reached out to me about three years ago. And like a lot of you guys, it was really, I think, uh, uh, hard for him to really get through um, and break through. And I sat with Jay for about three hours, man, and I, I, I showed him everything. I showed him everything. And I was like, Jay, look, man, you got to do it, man. It ain't about you. It's about your kids. And I think at that time, um, what held you back? Uh, worry about not, you know, uh, not having the money to provide for the family or, or not having the money to to start what it took, uh, what you explained, and taking away from the family at the same time. Just, just you know, the frame of mind that I grew up in, that's what held me back overall, to, to put it simply, the frame of Fear. mind that I grew up in. Fear. So if you are afraid to do your first deal, let me tell you from someone – who, you know, I went through a lot in my life. And even after I went through prison twice and, um, you know, got out and then went through growing rapidly, which I'm going to show you guys how to do today, leveraging real estate, uh, I went bankrupt. I lost everything in the last downturn. And so I'm going to show you uh, why I did that, and um, well, we're going to talk about Jason, but I'm going to I'm going to interject and show why I did that and why you shouldn't be afraid. Um, the only thing that you should be afraid of is not trying because everybody fails, and Jason will fail, but his failures won't be imminent, and they will not dictate his future. They'll be small stumbling blocks. So maybe when I say he will fail, there will be things that he hoped to do in real estate that maybe don't always come with the same outcome. But that doesn't matter because ultimately those little failures will become building blocks for his success. So the only time that you really fail in life is when you give up. Um, because what I learned about even going through bankruptcy was that it accelerated um, my wealth because I still control the assets, even though the bank had the notes on them. So I was able to come in and grow rapidly because I held the assets because I didn't run because I put a great team together, including my partner, Mike Ely. And we were able to come in and he helped me negotiate uh, just an amazing amount of, of properties. And we started accumulating wealth through my bankruptcy to the point of when I finalized my bankruptcy, two years after that, I had enough money to retire. I had enough passive income to retire at the age of, was I 40 years old? And I'm 45 now. And um, I want to show you guys uh, step by step how Jason did his first deal, how he overcame his challenges. Uh, he called me about two years uh, after, and now we talked here and there, but not really about real estate. He called me about two years after we first met, and I told Jason, I said, Jason, look, man, you know, like, I kind of felt like you wasted my time. I already told you. You know everything. I was like, look, man, I was real sure. I said, man, call me back when you got $20,000, right? So Jason, because I wanted to see that he was committed. Jason called me back in um, um, a week and we kind of went over all the assets he had and what he could do. And you, do you need that? You, you're not. And he called me back and he had $40,000. And so at that point, I said, Jay, man, you, <laughs> where are you selling weed? Did you rob a bank? What's going on? And uh, Jay, I'll let you take it over and, and kind of tell us, you know, your journey and what you did. Uh, Matt, you got some pictures, too. As we go through, I want you to make sure you show the renovation so you guys can kind of see the renovation that he did. He didn't do shoddy workmanship. Yep. So, hey, guys, uh, thanks again on BRRRR and YouTube. Uh, we are also on Clubhouse, anybody that's, that's in the mobile field. Um, and uh, you guys, just let us know where you're, what part of the United States or what part of the world you're in. I know we got 37, 38,000 members. Um, we thank you guys, and we are really here to reach and teach you guys what we know and the mistakes that we made, so hopefully you don't have to make them. And uh, all we ask is that you give back and be kind to people. So go ahead and chime in. Let us know where you're from. And, guys, questions, any questions you have along the way, hold them towards the end. We'll do a question, uh, a QA and a on here. So uh, go ahead, uh, go ahead, Jay. So basically, when I talked to Nate, he talked, you know, he's, like you said, he's real short. You know, and uh, I appreciated the time I got from him. 
But I didn't want to waste his time. So I uh, got off the phone and I kind of thought about the things I could do, uh, the things that I needed versus the things that it did, what be considered uh, uh, basically what I don't need. I had a car, a BMW. It wasn't worth a lot, but it wasn't needed. I had three cars, actually, all together. So I, t- I put right away, I put my car on, on uh, the auction block. I put my truck on the auction block. I cashed these things in. Uh, I took out a 401k loan, and it wasn't scary. Of course it was scary. Um, but to me, that's what I needed to, to put pressure on myself because every dollar that I cashed in and I'm going to use, it, it was a Dollars out of my family's pocket, so it, it actually committed me to my goal even more. So I, these are the things I've done. Um, wanted, and, I, and, and in return, I wanted to show Nate how serious I am about this, and that's where I came up with my forty thousand. You know, if if I had to, even today, if I have to cut my cable off, these are all luxury items. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> One hundred fifty here, two hundred dollars there. I don't care. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's a long, long term goal. That's so. awesome, man. That's mindset, guys. And what he's talking about. Uh, my partner reached out, my partner, Mike Ely, you know, just, man, my best friend. Um, he's like a brother to me. And, um, you know, he, you know, he, he challenged about three years ago. We were in a really comfortable place. And he said, um, hey, Nate, look, man, we need to step outside our comfort zone. And so I was like, you want me to, like, lose weight? And like, he was like, no, no, no. You need to get outside our comfort zone. Um, because mentally, you know, we're comfortable. We didn't need anything else. And he was like, look, man, we ain't got no money. And I'm talking about we worth millions of dollars. He like, look, we ain't got no money, man. We broke, man. We broke, you know? And, um, essentially it's all about who you're comparing yourself to. So Mike's comparing himself to guys. He knows that, that <coughs> that'll take like, and spend a hundred thousand dollars a week in, on their jet. And so you have to continue to elevate yourself. Otherwise, you feel like you've made it and you're successful. So Mike, uh, uh, through that, we, we said every day we wanted to push each other and said, you know what, we want to be uncomfortable. Now, we were very educated in what we were doing. And so that's where Jay felt like I'm, I'm comfortable. You know, they told me if I just work here for 20 more years, I'll have enough money to retire. And, you know, my kids, if they want to go to college and, that's what they teach you, right? And I say, they, that's society. But what we want to show you is something different. And even if you um, fail, you will still succeed. Ultimately, it's up to you to not give up. So we're going to break this deal down. Matt, if you could, uh, maybe not now, but put some pictures. So tell us about your first deal, how you found it, how much you paid for it, how you got financing, how you prepared yourself to get a deal even before you got one. So once I got the, the liquid cash, um, you know, I, and I'm all new to this, you know, I was like, how am I going to find a good deal? And, and what I was also was weighing on me heavy there is I don't want to, starting off, especially starting off, I don't want to get into a deal that wasn't a good deal uh, with the frame of mind that I got to have, it's got to be a, a, a home run, you know, in order to keep, keep it going to, you know, just keep this going. I don't want to stall out on my first deal. I don't want to lose out on my first deal. That's very you know, important, Jay. It's very important. So, actually, uh, what I did is there's a lot of there's a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, routes you can go. And, um, I, I put on Facebook looking to buy houses, and um, you know, very simple. You know, this, this was just some. I got a couple hundred friends out there on Facebook or whatever. Some people that I don't even know happened to get a hit back from somebody that I knew. He was selling his house. I actually, passed up on it. I, you know, I thought about it, passed up on it, talked to Nate about it. You know, you're always looking for a better deal. To this, that, whatever. It, it, it was, it was about two months later. I came back to it. He kept, he kept calling me. You know, I got the price down a little bit. Came back to it, comped the area around there, and uh, it was the best deal at the time that I could find. So uh, I took it, and, uh, and that's what I'm running with. So it wasn't just the best deal, guys. I mean, it was actually a home run. Um, so guys be resourceful, Facebook, uh, you know, in this group here, B R R R R reach out on YouTube, even go on our YouTube, subscribe. There'll be people in there. If you tell them what you're looking for, that'll respond. Um, it's all about exposure, you know, and and ultimately it doesn't matter. You do what you have to do to get what you need. And that is the true definition of an entrepreneur. 
Now, I say that, you know, that doesn't mean you cross people or do people wrong. So the property he got was it was a three bedroom. It was it was actually uh, on paper. It was, it was originally a three bedroom, one bath. On paper, meaning the auditor had it as a three bedroom, one bath. When right? I, yeah, when, when I looked at the property, the one car garage with the one car wraparound garage. Yeah, and I, when I looked at the property, they had, they had actually converted one of the bedrooms into like a dining room area because the house is only just under a thousand foot. So they they converted one of them. which guys <coughs> again a thousand square foot three bedroom house. It is small, um, but I'd rather have a thousand square foot um, house than a you know five thousand if the numbers peak out. In other words, in this neighborhood, it wouldn't have mattered how big it was. You're going to cap out at a certain dollar amount. So go ahead. And not, and not only, I feel like it was a, I feel like it was a, a great starter piece for me uh, because uh, the renovation wasn't a whole lot of renovation. It was it was a great first first move experience wise. You know, for someone to to have very little to no experience, uh, I went and looked at it. They had it converted to a two bedroom, one bath. So automatically, just doing, you know, reading books. Mike's books uh, included. Uh, I From broke to millions dot com. <coughs> that was exactly. a book, right? Exactly. Broke to millions. Yeah, I got a copy. I read three, three or four books that. beforehand. Uh, knew that converting that back to a three bedroom was going to get me more money as far as rental wise and everything else. So that was the goal. This is the book, guys. Make sure if you really want to know how to go to the next step and a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, uh, go to from broke to millions dot com. Oh, this is Mike here, just great guy, wants to get back to you. Actually, a good friend of his, Jerome Bettis. Uh, Jerome, the bus Bettis, wrote the foreword, and uh, just a great book, man. Thank you for that uh, knowledge there, Mike. Um, so let's go through the numbers here. How did you know that this was a pretty good deal? Well, uh, the price he was asking uh, versus, you know, the first thing I want to do is comp. Now, keep in mind, I'm 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 learning every every step I go I'm learning you know I don't I don't know if I'm doing the right thing if, but you know one thing I did know is you comp the area with the residential properties so just on that cul-de-sac I'm looking at all the properties the values and what they've sold for and, and there was a couple of houses luckily that it was up for sale and they was they was averaging around one hundred thirty thousand. So what did you end up striking the price at? And hold on, uh, what, what you got, little man? This is right here. Show him, Jay. This, this is my what, motivation here. This is part of his motivation right my here. Mini me. Yeah, this is part of his motivation. What's up, buddy? It looks like he's in a bad mood. Huh? Huh? <laughs> go, go, go play on the phone here. I'll be back. You need something, buddy? He said he's hungry. He'll get something. Oh, he's hungry? Take, okay, take cool. So you paid six. Let's break down the numbers. You paid 65000 for it. Correct. But. One of the things you want to make sure you do, he went and he got set up with a local bank to do a construction loan. Um, the construction loan uh, was a higher interest, but actually he didn't even do the construction piece. Um, there were a couple things I told him in setting this up, which I've been talking to you guys about, which one of the things he didn't do, I guess he, he probably knew, didn't see the value in it. And now I'll let him explain that to you later. But purchase price was 65000 he put twelve thousand down, so he financed. Uh, wait, no, it was sixty-seven. It was sixty-five. 65. Two thousand in closing costs, mm -hmm. so he put twelve thousand down. His loan was for fifty-five thousand dollars. He renovated it out of pocket. He put twelve thousand in, so he had twenty-four thousand cash out of pocket. Now, how long did it take you to renovate this, and what did you do? I did whatever I could. I didn't have a team. Uh, I put in sweat, sweat equity myself. And I'm not a construction guy. Uh, I have limited, what what, what date did you buy this? About I closed on it August 5th. Okay, August 5th. Okay, when did you have it renovated? By? I rented it out um, October 1st. Wow. Yeah. So 55 <clears throat> days from start to finish, from buying this place to actually renovating it and renting it out. And that's keeping a full time job. You know, I work I work full time. He works about eighty hours a I week. Just, I just kept guys. He worked seventy eighty hours a week. Yeah, I work seven twelve hour days, and I'm off seven twelve you know, seven days there. So. But then they call him in a lot too, yeah, right? Yeah. So you know, Jay's working a lot of hours, uh, and he makes good money. But no matter how much money you make, if you don't have investments uh, that are working for you while you're sleeping, it's hard to really accumulate wealth because you're paying yourself a set predetermined amount. Uh, per hour, trading your time for a fixed amount of money. 
So, and you got to do that until you don't have to do that. And that's where we're going to, in the next five years, Jay just did his first house. And I'm going to show you guys, he follows this step by step. And I think he'll beat this, but he will be a millionaire in five years. And we'll show you on paper too. Um, Cause we want all you guys to know exactly what you can do. So he had 77,000 in this property. He financed 55,000. He got an eight and a half percent interest only loan on the 55,000. He put 24,000 down. He rented it for 1200 a month. Now tell them how you went about renting this property. You're going to have a lot of people to <clears throat> just want the house. Uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I, we rent it to me, we rent it to me. I did, I did well, how did you background. advertise? How did you get people? We actually, uh, my wife got on Zillow um, and advertised like that. Um, we got a, a abundance of hits on that to people that wanted to. Uh, you put the updated pictures in there? Yeah, I put the updated pictures in there and the price and, the, you know, the, the neighborhood and everything. But actually, who we actually rented out to was by word of mouth. From a good uh, good friend of mine there, you know, who kind of vouched for this tenant, and I went ahead and did that with, actually, uh, against my wife's will, um, to be honest, because we did a background check, and you know, quite a few years back, you know, she had some stuff on there, but you know, I talked to her, and, and then talking to my buddy who who's uh, backing her, uh, I went ahead, you know, with my gut feeling. And rented it out, and it's been working out pretty good so far. Now, when you say there was some stuff, how old was it, and what kind of stuff? It was it was a uh, probably seven or eight years old or something like that, and, and it was in another state. And you know me. So, how did you do a background check and get uh, to another state? Twenty five dollar get... application fee, which pays for your, you know, pays for that that, that background check, um, and it also you know let let you know how serious people are about renting. You know, twenty five dollars don't sound like a lot, but uh, and then, so I got it. We got on the internet, did the background free back or not free, but twenty five dollar uh, background check, and uh, it pulled up some things on her. Some things like assault seven eight years ago. Uh, you know, I talked to her about it. it was in a whole now you say whole assault? State. Assault, so you got assault. salt. So like yeah. what she was doing, snow removal or assault? Nah. assault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she explained what was going on there. Of course, you know, you don't know what to believe, what, what not to, but I went ahead with my gut because like I said, I'm, I'm a person who came from a, a not so clean background myself. So, you know, I, I do believe in the second chances and everything, you know, things like that. So now we'll tell you guys that once you start to get bigger, um, we can't really differentiate, you know, there's like fair housing laws and stuff like that. And if you want to know more about that, make sure you follow my partner, Mike Ely, and go join the other group that, that we have. Me and him have a group called uh, Apartment Investing Secrets. Um, because once you get into that, it's all automated because you don't want to get involved in getting sued. And so we put it in, and it comes back. It's a third party. We put in what qualifications, which ones are okay, which ones aren't, and then it spits it out. The only thing that we have to decipher then, it says yes or no, we have to decipher do they have the income to qualify. So, did you also look at uh, their income and make sure that they qualified on their income? Yeah, she's a she's a uh, uh, I guess a nurses aide, what they yep. call it, and then she also has a um, she had two kids and she and one of them's on some kind of some sort of disability. So I knew that that was definite income. Uh, I think it was around six or seven hundred dollars a month. So I knew that was definite income right then and there. And uh, you know, another thing I had to worry about, you know, you got to figure the times too. You know. I looked at her. She was in the, in the medical business, nursing business, or whatever. So that's going to be a, a good job to have in this in this times of COVID. Uh, that's one one of the more secure jobs you're probably going to have. So mm -hmm, I also mm -hmm. I, I, that was a real big thing uh, in approving her uh, for the house. Also, um, you still you still worry about. I still even to this day worried about. Well, you know, the, you know, uh, the, you get these the squatters, the ones that that find out that you can't evict them at that time. Uh, well, that, you actually that, that can. You actually can, and we'll go into that if you guys have any questions on that. There are two pieces of paper that they have to bring, and if they can't, um, but we'll get into that later. And if you ever have any problems with that, mm -hmm. you know there are uh, way. I mean, you know, there's really, um, there's ways around that for the most part. Anyway, yeah. So, but, but, I mean, for the most part, you, you're going to have people out there that's going to take advantage of situations. You know, yeah. So. Yeah, so we work with people, but people that are taking advantage of it, we have an attorney, and there are certain procedures and steps. So if you guys got any questions, make sure you ask, and we can tell you guys uh, about that and how you can actually get a tenant out that is trying to take advantage of COVID. Um, 
So then you were you were all in for 70, uh, 77,000. Um, you're running it out for 1200 a month, which said with $1,200 a month, you're going to have a 7% vacancy at 84. His debt, which was his principal interest taxes and insurance are 594. Uh, because keep in mind, he's paying eight and a half percent to a bank. It's, uh, not hard money, but it's, it's not conventional either, but it's interest only. Um, and utilities are $12 a month. And the way we figure that guys, if he's going to have a 7% vacancy on the property, make sure you include people say, Oh no, it's a single family home. I don't have to pay that. Well, it's going to go vacant 7% of the time on average, maybe five, whatever, take 365 days times it by 0.07. You're going to come up with 22 days, figure out what it costs for utilities. And, um, then, you know, you want to plug that in why it's vacant, why it's down, why you're going in there, cleaning it up. You're going to have some downtime. Um, so make sure you include that. That's $12 a month, $96 a year. Your management fee, even though Jason self manages, the next step I want to show him is to create a management company to run that revenue through. Um, and the reason I want to do that is because I want him to know what it costs him to actually manage it as he starts to scale and grow. So we're going to show him how to start a management company up because he doesn't necessarily need one right now. And he doesn't need to pay that 8%, which is $96 a month, but eventually he will. Uh, maintenance, we got $75 a month in there, which is probably high because he did everything. He did the gutters, he did the roof, he did the windows, any of that stuff that needed done, new kitchen cabinets, new appliances, service to HVAC unit. Yep. Um, I just, everything was serviced. Everything was serviced. Everything was good. And then also he started off with the re reserve fund. So he has... Uh, three to five thousand dollars in reserves for that property, but he's going to continue to put seventy five dollars a month in reserves for that single family home, um, and then his turnover he's going to put seventy five dollars a month, even though he has a deposit on a property. Right, mm -hmm. you got a deposit on a property. You want to make sure that you add that in every month because year four, year five, you're going to have to replace the carpet. That's a thousand dollars. You just want to. It's okay to overfund this stuff. So. He has about $189 a month in cash flow. But keep in mind, that is everything being done right out of $1,200. Um, so he has 2,268. Wait, he has uh, about 1,000, about, hold on, $2,268 a year in cash flow. Um, he has a 9.45% he has a return that he's making off of his capital, but... Here's what he's going to do, guys. And I want to hear your feedback because I know a lot of you guys aren't going to agree with this. What I recommend he goes and does, he has right now, he has a uh, the property appraised out about $135,000. So he can go pull out 80% of that, do a new loan. His new loan is going to be a 30-year AM at 3.5% uh, a year. He's going to be able to get a new uh, loan for $108,000. He's going to lose about $3,000 at the closing cost. So he's going to bring home $105,000. Uh, Matt, why don't you go ahead and put up some pictures of that? Okay, now the one thing that I don't like about this area, and I told Jason, was that I don't think it's in an area where we're going to see a lot of appreciation because everything in Cincinnati is appreciating fast right now. Long term, though, I think he can hold this property and I think he'll still beat maybe inflation or keep up with inflation, um, which is good. And I think he keeps it right now because he wants to acquire a bunch of assets. But long term, you want to get out of this area because there's not a lot of basic jobs there. And they're kind of pushing everybody from the city over to that side of Cincinnati. But for now, I think it's a good hold. So he's going to get $105,000, a loan for $105,000. He's going to pay off his original uh, fifty five. He's going to get his twenty four back. Plus $26,000. So he's going to get $50,000 cash out. He's not going to have to pay any taxes on uh, that because it's a, it's a loan. Um, so his new payment on that is going to be $484.97. His cash flow is going to drop down to right around $100 a month. Um, so a thousand, right around $1,000 a year in cash flow. A lot of you guys are going to say, well, that's nothing. But you got $50,000 now. Plus, since you amortize this, you have $170 a month in principal reduction. So you're actually getting $94 more per month towards your net worth. You're getting uh, $389.58 uh, 
a month towards your towards your net worth instead of uh, the hundred dollars you were getting before. I think that's right. Hold on, guys. We had. I'm sorry. He's getting three thousand and forty dollars. Uh, he's getting two thousand forty towards his uh, principal reduction a year. He's getting a thousand in cash flow. Plus, he has fifty thousand cash back. So he has no money in the property. He has twenty six thousand cash back plus his twenty four thousand original. Now he's going to take that. He's going to go buy two properties, right, Jay? Correct. So that's kind of where we're at right now. He's going to go buy two properties. He's going to be all in on them for roughly eighty thousand. They're going to appraise it one hundred and twenty. Do you think that's doable by August the first of this year? Yep, I'll make it happen. So his first year, he's going to have three properties. Uh, at that point, he's going to have those two properties. He's going to have about two hundred a month in cash flow out of each one. He's going to have 150 in principal reduction. So he's going to have a total of $8,400 in cash flow. Plus, he's going to add back in his $3,040 from his other property. He's going to have $11,440 in, in uh, cash flow and principal reduction a year, which if you take that and you divide that by his, his initial investment, $11,440 divided by $24,000, that is a 47.6% uh, return yearly. But he also has 80, 90, about $100,000 in equity. So he's going to do the same thing over and over and over. The problem when you go and over leverage a property, which this one is, is, is looking at it as, as a single asset, it's kind of leverage high. The problem with doing that is if you take the money out, and you go buy a boat, a car, a Rolex watch, uh, a depreciating asset, go on vacation. That's where you get hurt. But Jay, when you pull this pull this fifty thousand cash out, what do you plan to do with it? Um, property. 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 So he's gonna else. buy more property. And when you buy more property, I know me and my partner Mike back in um, man two thousand and Mike, you there, buddy? Mike, you got something to say? I'm here. You got something to say, Mike? Oh, you don't, you counting money? Is that type of paperwork? <laughs> so Mike's doing paperwork. This church money, man. To get this PPP money. Oh, you're getting the PPP money for the church, man. So, yeah, no, nah, that's awesome, Mike. We appreciate your help with that, man. Um, so, guys, as long as you take this money and you, you go buy more real estate with it, I know a lot of guys, you're conservative. And listen, man. I got to tell you guys, man, I started doing a single family home, no education, come from a, a normal, uh, poor, alcoholic family, like most of you guys, uh, went to prison twice when I was younger, four felonies, no education, started buying single family homes, and now we own over $100 million in real estate using this same method. But this year alone, we're going to buy four, five, six hundred million $600 million worth of real estate. So we're really ramping it up because right now we see a huge opportunity to grow in the hotel space. Um, so we'll get into more of that later, guys. But uh, like I said, man, we're here to help you guys out. Come on in, buddy. You're all right. You're all right. You need anything? Jay's kids over here for you guys that are on Clubhouse. And, uh, you know, so he, he's hanging out with Jay today. And I encourage the man, bring your kid. Let them know what you're doing. Show them what you're doing. You know, I know me and Mike, we took our kids on the jobs and, uh, you know, probably got, you know, wives were probably upset and talking about, hey, did you get you get any bed bugs today? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I just went on a couple of weeks. But because, you know, sometimes you're going through these properties. Thank God we never did get any bed bugs um, at our house. But the properties that we do buy have them. So that's one of the other things you got to deal with. So, guys, Jay is we are going to continue to follow Jay. We are going to uh, we are going to watch his progress and we're going to keep up with you, Jay. Are you on our BRRRR group? Yeah. And you're on Apartment Investing Secrets? Yep. Man, I just got to tell you, I'm proud of you, man. I'm really it, proud man. of you, brother. I appreciate for it. For taking that first step. But as soon as Jay did that first property, and he got at least, you know what, Jay was so excited. He said, I just want to do another one. Yeah. But let's talk about the one thing that you didn't do that I told you to do. That was start your own construction company, right? Mm -hmm. Now, why didn't you do that? You just didn't see a need for it. Yeah. Not, <clears throat> not that I didn't see a need, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I don't, I didn't know the know-how. You know, 
I didn't know exactly, you know, the first steps to go through. But you could have called me, Jay. Right, I know, but you guys are busy. And, you know, I, and, I'm not and, busy. And, and here's where pride, don't let pride, and that's that's one of the things I'd like to say, don't let pride uh, get in your way of, of reaching out. And I know that, he, you know, him, Mike, these guys are crazy busy. So And and, and I wanted to try to show, you know, that I can do this, you know, do this on my own. And you did. And, and it's a learning You did lesson, it mostly, you know? man. You yeah. did it, brother. I'm proud of you. I'm really proud of you, man, because there's not a lot of people that we grew up with that are, uh, you know, successful. Um, and I, I mean that, man, like, you know, growing up, man, success was getting the new Jays. And, um, you know, so to come from that and see where you're at, man. But the reason that I was telling them that is because you're going to have problems they're going to want it to season. And then you're going to have problems when you go to do the refi. They're going to say, oh, you're doing a cash out refi. It's risky to us. So the way we really learned this, me and Mike, was we watched what the big developers did. The guys that are doing $100 million deals, they'll come in and they'll be what's called vertically integrated. That means that they own part of the process. And so they start their own construction company up. And then they make developer fees. They make acquisition fees. And they also make, uh, let's say, interior design fees. You bill all that back. All this stuff that you're doing, sweat equity, you bill that back. Because if not, you would have to pay somebody to do it. You start your construction company up, and you started one. And let's just say it's uh, J J I L L C uh, J L J I Construction LLC, which is not. But now, J I L L C comes in. He buys this property for $55,000. You guys write this down because I want you to get this. This is going to save you and help you grow. Otherwise, you, you'll be able to do five or six houses in, 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 in five years. But if you get this process down here, you'll be able to accelerate your growth and you'll be able to reach 25, 30 houses in five years. That's two the first year, four the second, six the third, eight the fourth, and 10 the fifth year. Do you think that's doable, two, four, six, eight, ten? Very doable. Yeah. Very doable. And he's only done one, guys. But once you get that one house done, that's when you can really understand a process. So by creating this uh, LLC, then what you do is you create a paper trail to show how much money. So here, guys, let's go down. We're going we're gonna to go down step by step what Jason did. And then we're going to put a value on it. Not his value, but a retail value. Okay, Jay, what did you do? Well, I got the paper right here. Uh, Frame up doorway to kitchen. Right. Yep. So you had to frame, frame it up, framed up the doorway to the kitchen, which was, which was like I said, uh, that was uh, part of bringing that. Third, you had to frame third, it and drywall it. Frame and drywall. That was okay. Bring, so that so retail, we could have charged twelve hundred dollars for that, right? Yeah. Okay. Then what else did you do? Paint. The paint whole, the whole house. Okay. Paint. Okay. This this framing is that the only framing you had? Uh, you probably had to do baseboards and stuff in there. You yeah, had to fix the baseboards. You had to piece them in. Baseboards. So you, you could charge, you know, probably eighteen hundred. Nobody's gonna nobody's, patchwork. Patchwork on the drywall. Okay, yeah, nobody's gonna blink at eighteen hundred for that. Paint the house. You had to paint, right? To, yep. Tore out the whole kitchen. Okay, so painting <clears throat> is actually something you could charge about three dollars a square foot. That's a thousand square foot house. You charge three thousand dollars all day for that. Now, what'd you get it done for? Probably a thousand, eleven hundred. Thousand dollars. Yep. And then was that including the? Paint? That's where I leveraged friends. Uh, you know, I got I got friends that do certain things there, and he's actually a painter. So you know, and, and while I was at work, time is money. Some things are just better. Yeah, off. absolutely. The Delegate. quality of him, well, versus him paying that. Well, just imagine <laughs> if it would have took you four months. Now you yeah. lost two months worth of rent, which was twenty four hundred dollars. Yeah. Get the deal done. Create the equity. Yeah. That's where you make your money at is building this equity. Okay, tear what else did you do? Tear, tear out, out the, the kitchen, the kitchen. Yeah. and then replace the kitchen. That's the, and that was cabinets, countertops. Yeah. That's easy. Fifteen grand. Nobody's gonna blink at that, right? That's kitchen remodel, and that's flooring or that that's appliances, new cabinets. A little bit of redesign. Stain yeah. You put oh, yeah. stainless appliances, stainless right? Stainless appliances in there. Added cab cabinetry. Yep. Um, um, and then countertops. Countertops, all, all of it. Okay. So that's 15, <laughs> that's 12, 15 grand. Nobody's going to blink at that. What else you got? Uh, Kitchen floor. Flooring. Okay. So we'll just say flooring through the whole property. You could do $3 a foot. That's 3000 Yeah, because I carpeted everything Yeah, you could just say 3 bucks a foot. Nobody's going to blink at that. Actually, 4 or 5 if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot. So we'll, we'll say 4 We'll say 4000 for The windows was double-pane windows, but they had the fog in between there where you had, you just had to replace the windows. So, I so how many windows did you replace? Seven. Seven all in all. So windows. seven windows. You could charge six to $800. So let's just say 700 That's 4900 for windows. 
four, oh. four glass block. Included. Four glass block. You can Build see 300 a piece. That's 1,200 for glass block installed. That's tear out and install, right? Yep. Okay, what else? Storm doors. Uh, Two front, storm front, doors? Front and the side, yeah. So, say, uh, install 1,200 for storm doors. You just say doors and hardware, right? Yeah. Okay, did you do any other hardware? Uh, no, actually, well, yeah, you know, door knobs. Door uh, knobs throughout? Yeah, throughout. So, door knobs, you had to do new front door, entry door. Correct. So, you could say, what, 800 there? Yeah. Knobs, install, hardware. Okay. What else you got? Uh, move to the bathroom. And, guys, it. the reason we're showing you this, because we're going to show you this real quick, what you can do. So, just follow us here. Uh, bathroom, was a lot of trim work. I uh, actually had it recoated the tub. You reglazed uh, it? Reglazed it okay. and the tile that goes around it. Um, okay. Uh, had that recoded. Uh, so, bathroom remodel. New vanity? No, actually, the vanity was pretty good. You painted so, it? Yeah, we painted it. New hardware? Hardware, correct. Okay, yeah, new mirror? shower. Yeah, okay, so we'll just say, you know, uh, bath remodel. Uh, we'll just say four grand. You put a new toilet? Yeah. New okay, toilet. so we'll say 4000 for the bath remodel. Um, and then what about plumbing in there? Any plumbing? No, it was, uh, it was pretty good. Okay. It was, it was, it was, uh, All right, what else you got, brother? Uh, basement wise, uh, went into the basement. Painted, painted the garage, uh, painted, fixed the, fixed the leak. Actually, when you said plumbing, there from the basement up, it was already so, cut so out. So you 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 pressure washed, you acid etched, and you sealed the garage floor, the garage walls, and, and the whole basement, yeah. the, whole the, basement? The, whole basement. the whole basement, the whole basement, the whole basement. Okay, so that's easy. Uh, Three thousand uh, clean because you had to do more. I'm sure you had to do mortar work. Were there any like uh, yeah. concrete blocks you had to do mortar work? Um, no, not 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 too much more to work, but uh, that's where I got the glass block windows to replace three uh, glass block. We got the nice glass block over here. So we windows. got a clean basement. We got acid etch. We got uh, paint, right? Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, so you had to pressure wash it out? Pressure washed all that, yeah. yeah. So that's three grand, guys. And again, if you call somebody retail, they may be higher than that. And, and you know, it may be a little lower, but, you know, those are just basic numbers that we're using. So... Um, hey, Nate, when you get a second, we got, we got one or two questions on Facebook. Okay, we're going to finish this out, and then we'll jump into that, guys. Uh, thank you for your, uh, you know, questions. Appreciate that, Mike. Um, so, we went to, so then we turned to the outside. Do? Turned yep. to the outside there where we pressure washed the whole house. So, uh, pressure washed the whole exterior. Whole and exterior, painted it. Painted the porch. Painted the porch. What about the soffit? And, 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 and it was in pretty good condition. I had to I had to fix some of the siding there, but didn't have to replace it. You had to, you had to do a little mortar work, I'm guessing, out there, like uh, around the windows. Did have to do some mortar work on the um, uh, some cosmetic mortar work on so, the uh, patio. So if somebody told you thirty five hundred for exterior uh, pressure washing, um, you know, okay. tuck point. We recapped the uh, fr front porch and put. Maybe I think it's twelve foot of replace twelve foot of uh, the driveway fresh concrete. There. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna say exterior pressure wash, tuck point, service <laughs> gutters, right? You service the gutters. Yep, yep. Okay. Did you do any painting? Uh, on the outside there, the, the foundation we we coated. Okay, the so paint. So that's thirty five hundred guys, and you could probably go five grand. Nobody's gonna. When, when I'm talking about these are these are retail numbers. These are probably on the low side. Um, some of these septic tank. I had it serviced. Okay, service septic tank was that five hundred bucks? Yeah, it was five hundred. Yeah. Okay, it's five hundred service septic. Uh, what else did you do? Yeah, what, was that? what did you do? You replaced part of the portion of the driveway there in concrete. Part of the portion of the driveway. Yeah. Okay, so and recap the front porch. Yeah. Okay, so we can say that's easy. Uh, Thirty five hundred <clears throat> in masonry work, and then we got landscaping, right? Yeah. That's okay. About it. Landscaping, we could say twelve hundred for landscaping, right? Is there anything else? What about interior lights, interior uh, plumbing uh, fixtures? I did, I did uh, some interior, change the lighting to all LED. Um, did you just change the bulbs? You didn't change the fixtures? Fixtures, fixtures. Okay, yeah. so light fixtures and install. So let's say that's uh, 1200 And then what about plumbing fixtures? Uh, I did have to put a, a, a disposal, this disposal in there. Okay, we're going to keep that in the kitchen. Okay. We're not gonna. So, yeah, so okay. guys, here, let's add this up real quick. Uh, and, 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 guys, you may agree, may disagree. We're just trying to give you the basic concept. So, 1800 plus 3000 plus 15000 that's kitchen, plus 4000 and that's uh, 
throughout. Keep in mind, he gutted the kitchen. He put in new kitchen cabinets. He put in a new countertop. He put in a new sink, a new disposal, a new faucet, new supply lines, new stainless steel appliances, um, new countertop, and what else did you you rearranged it a little bit too, didn't you? Oh yeah, I added a lot more uh, cabinetry. Okay, and then he had another four thousand in flooring. Okay, we already got that. Plus windows were forty nine hundred. Plus twelve hundred for the glass block. Plus twelve hundred for the the doors and the hardware. That's storm door, six hundred dollars a door. Plus eight hundred for the knobs install. Um, you know the all knobs throughout. Would you use stainless steel, brush nickel? Yeah, brush nickel. Okay, that's eight hundred dollars. <throat> Plus we had four thousand for the bath remodel. You only had one bath, right? Correct. We had three thousand to clean, acid wash, paint the basement. That's basement and a garage. Did you have to service the garage at all? No. Nope, nope, you got thirty five hundred uh, to pressure wash the exterior, tuck point the exterior, service the gutters, paint the gutters, remount the downspouts. Uh, we got five hundred to service the septic tank. We got thirty five hundred for the exterior um, to fix the driveway, to cap the front porch. We got twelve hundred in landscaping. And we got twelve hundred in light fixtures, so that's forty eight thousand eight hundred. Okay, so you could create a, a contract for forty eight thousand eight hundred. He got this done for twelve grand. What that's going to allow you to do, guys, is forty eight eight plus. What'd you pay fifty five thousand for? It? Yeah, that's one hundred and three thousand eight hundred plus on his forty eight eight. I'm going to do a 10 and 10 times 1.2, 10% profit, 10% overhead since you're GC in a job. So that's 58,560. Um, and, and we got a program that does all that for us plus the 55,000. So even if the bank comes back and says, Hey, we only want to give you 80% of what you have in it. You create a mortgage for this 58,562 and you record all that, or you just document everything like you're paying the checks to your construction company that you own, um, then you're going to get into uh, like your basis being higher and you're going to have profits on your construction company. So I don't want to overcomplicate it. We'll do a whole nother video on that um, because there is, I want to get an accountant on to answer those questions. I don't want to answer those questions because I'm not a CPA, but I know there are ways around that for us. But I'm not a W-2 employee. I'm a real estate professional, so I have tax codes that are different than other people.